I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. I got a follow-up video for you today to yesterday's video where I showed you how I built my perfect quadcopter. There were a couple questions that came up again and again and again in the comments, and I read all the comments, but I'll bet a lot of you guys don't. So I'm going to answer those questions here in today's video. In addition to that, I did some work today on finding a really great prop that fits these motors. These 2407 motors, they fly a little bit different than the 2306, 2207 sized motors that everybody's most commonly flying today. So I wanted to do some exploration. The props that I usually like the best may not be the best on these particular motors. And in fact, I tried one prop that really surprised me and may unseat HQ as my favorite prop, at least on these motors. So that'll be nice. In addition to that, I got some half decent freestyle for you. A lot of you guys ask, well, how does it fly? Well, you're going to find out today. I'm a little bit torn about which to do first to show you the prop testing and the cool freestyle flying, which I think you're really going to enjoy, or to just go dive in and answer the questions. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I'm going to tease you slightly. The props I tested were the HQ 5x4.8x3, the Gem Fan 5149, the T Motor 5143, and the Mr. Steel Ethics S3 props. I hope you guys are excited by at least one of those props. The S3 prop is super popular right now. Just, you know, Mr. Steel puts out a product, everybody freaks out. And the Gemfan 5149 and the T Motor 5143 were off my radar, but so many people have been telling me they fly great that I had to test them out. So stay tuned for like three or four minutes of questions and answers, and then we'll get to that part. Or just skip ahead, right? It's YouTube. You can just skip ahead if you want to. Questions that stood out in the comments. One of the first questions was, how much does it weigh? And to answer that question, I've got for you here my scale. And this is um, uh, dry weight, I would call this. Dry weight is with everything except the battery and the camera. It comes in at 408 grams. And with, this is a, I think a 1500, I think it used to be a race day quads, 1500 4S, comes in at 584. And on top of here, comes in at 656 grams. So 656 grams. How does it fly? You'll see for yourself in just a few minutes. Bear in mind though, that freestyle quads, a lot of pilots like freestyle quads to be a little bit heavier because they carry their weight more. You can fling them and throw them. And well, anyway, I like how it flies. That's the bottom line. <laughs> Why 4S? Why not 6S? Isn't 6S the new hype? I'm not convinced that 4S has as much advantage for freestyle pilots as it does for racing pilots. Racing pilots need to get every last bit of performance out of their quad so they can get just so they can beat the next guy by 10 seconds or five seconds or two seconds a lap. And they don't care as much about just trashing their batteries. Freestyle pilots are more likely to be, well, amateurs. We're not competing hard against each other. We're just, we could just land and put another battery on and go for that awesome gap. So I built this based off of 4S also because the 6S version of my motor isn't out yet. Yes, we're working on a, I think it's a I think it's a 1650 KV one, might be 1700. I should, should kind of know that, but I didn't research it. <laughs> um, that is going to be coming out sometime after Chinese New Year in the March timeframe. So look forward to that. But also on 4S, I know a lot of people are still flying 4S. And so if I just go, well, you know, I'm a pro, I can afford to just bail for 6S. I still need to fly 4S because as a reviewer and a tester, I got to have the perspective of that. So I am, when my motor, when my 6S version of my motor comes out, I am going to put uh, 6S on one of these builds and we'll be able to do a, like a side-by-side -side comparison. I actually built three of these guys. And one of the reasons I wanted to build three was so I could have spares every now and then, but also so I could do kind of A-B comparisons of that sort. Another question people were asking was, am I ever going to release my motors in a different color scheme? The answer to that is no. I like the colors of these motors. I picked the colors because that's the color I wanted them to be. And if you don't like them, I respect that. I will tell you, if you want to do this exact same build, but you hate my color motors, if you look on miniquadtestbench.com, where Ryan Harrell tested my motors, they came out very similar to an F80 2407 2500 KV motor in terms of, they came out very similar to it. Um, and 
So if you want to build this with a black motor, go buy the F80 2407 and you'll get almost you get very similar performance. How come I didn't Loctite the screws on this build? I actually, I'm embarrassed to say I don't Loctite a lot of my screws. Um, my motor screws, I find that if I put them in securely, like after the first five packs go back and just double check that everything's tight, they just don't come out. I know some people religiously Loctite and that's cool. But especially because I'm sometimes I'm like for the top screws, I'm always going to be pulling those out to work on the quad. Loctite would just get in the way. Where did I get this XT60 with this little plastic shroud? I'll put a link to it down in the video description. I order them off of Amazon. They're available all over the place, but they they just come with this little shroud and it snaps on and it's pretty nice. Okay, those are the most common questions that were asked in the YouTube comments. Now I've answered them. Now let's talk about the props. And the first prop we're going to look at is the HQ 5x4.8x3. This is my standard go-to prop for these motors. My normal go-to prop for a typical 2207 or 2450 or 2306 motor would be the HQ 5x4.5 or maybe the HQ 5x4.3, depending on the KV of the motor and the weight of the quad. The 4.3 is lighter and is more tolerable for higher KV motors. The 5x4.5 is better, I think, for like a 2450 KV motor. Gets you a little more thrust and still good handling. But I go up to the 5x4.8 on my 2407 motors because they're more able to handle the heavier pitch, the higher pitch without sacrificing handling or responsiveness. You can go higher on my motors. You can run as high as maybe a 50-50, but at that point, the amp draw starts to become a little bit prohibitive. The amp draw on the 5x4.8, so this was another common question people ask, what about the amp draw? Obviously, the amp draw on a 2407, 2500 kV motor, 2550 kV is going to be more than like a 2207 or the larger stator size does account for something, but it's still manageable as long as you have a decent battery. I've run it on 95C batteries, no problem. Even cheap ones like China Hobby Line, they do fine. It's not, it's not bad. You get a little more sag, but it's still, I still like the way it flies. So we'll start with the HQ 5x4.8 and We'll go from there. So here's the HQ 5x4.8x3, my daily go-to prop. And it, I think it's a really good fit on these motors. They have plenty of torque to spin it without too much, without really much prop wash at all. And it makes a great amount of thrust. The place where it suffers a little bit is it doesn't feel ultra sharp in the corners. And that is definitely due in part to the weight of the quad. There's no doubt about that. Um, that being said, I really do like the way it flies. I like the durability. I just feel like it's a really good prop. But it's not that there's not anything to improve, that's for sure. Watch the DVR down in the bottom of the screen and you can see the uh, amps that I'm pulling. You can see they're pretty reasonable. You know, 50 amps or so here, 20 amps. As I do a punch out, it goes up, hits 70 amps. And I think if you keep watching, you will find a full, at least one full throttle punch, but you can definitely eyeball those amps and see that even with these 2407 motors, it's, it's not the end of the world. And the voltage sag, Okay, the voltage is sagging some. Now, it's a very cold day. It's a very cold day. Ladies, we've all had that problem, haven't we? Whoa, no. <laughs> the battery's definitely sagging some. Uh, down at 3.7, 3.6, we're still flying. It hangs in there, though. Uh, if you got a good quality battery, it's doing okay. And if you got a mediocre quality battery, it's not the end of the world. By the way, a lot of you guys were also wanting to see the camera and see how much video noise there was, if any. Um, so that's why I've included the full DVR here in the lower right, so you can get a sense of that. I know that the Runcam Micro Eagle that I've used is kind of a love it or hate it thing. I love it. I know a lot of people don't. It doesn't really suit your fancy, so this should help you figure out whether this uh, is the camera for you or maybe whether you'd like to skip it. The next one we're going to look at is the Gemfan 5149. This is a prop that 
I did not originally consider because I've tried the Gemfan uh, 5142 and the 5143. I actually have a video where I reviewed those and I found the 5143 to be kind of amp hungry and a little bit saggy on the battery. I didn't really 100% love it, but the 5149 stunned me. Now, at the moment that I'm recording this intro, I have not gone back and looked at the DVR to see how the amp draw was, but I can tell you the flight characteristics were, well, see for yourself. So right now, as I'm watching this during editing is the first time I've seen the actual amp draw. Uh, and I can see that it's higher than it was on the 5x4.8s, which surprises me. I didn't feel like these were sagging more. Um, but if you watch as I punch the throttle, the, you're, even on short throttle punches, you're seeing the amps jump up to 70, 80, or maybe even 100 amps. Um, there's 105 amps during this little punch over the house. I don't know, maybe this battery was just happier you know, these were not like controlled batteries or whatever, but uh, I did not feel like it was particularly saggy. And I actually felt like it was really like, uh, it just, it would change direction really sharply. It was, maybe it was making more thrust as a result of the, you know, it's drawing more amps, but it's also making more thrust and that's why it was flying so good. The 5149 is higher in diameter and higher in pitch than the 5048 that I usually fly. So maybe that additional thrust is helping to make up for some of the additional weight of the quad. Hmm, anyway, I really liked the way this quad flew. Uh, keep watching, you'll see. As we're coming here to the end of the flight, I also want to point out I'm getting 2 minutes, 33 minutes, and these are not new batteries. So although we're seeing high peaks when I punch the throttle, overall everything is sort of manageable. <laughs> That's an old uh, Instagram, right the fuck now. <laughs> Woo! Okay, you guys. I don't know. I, I like that was that was that was good. I don't know if that was just the the epic beat I was listening to in my headphones, or was my or it was uh, <clears throat> the props. I, I I like those props. I gotta go back and listen to the where did the quad end up? I don't even know. I gotta go back and listen to the. I gotta listen to the motors. That felt good. Wow. People had told me that the Gemfan 5149 is magic, and I think they might be right. Well, honestly, after the Gemfan 5149, I kind of didn't see a point in going on. But in the interest of science, I kept going, and I tried the T-Motor 5143. I will say this about the 5143. I really expect that it's going to be underpropped for my motors. With a big motor like the 2407, you're getting a lot of torque and it's capable of spinning a heavy prop with authority. You can, you can get responsiveness even on a heavier prop. But if you underprop the motor, then you've got this additional, you've got like three grams of additional weight per motor. 
and you're not getting that back in terms of thrust. And so you may, if you're going to run a lighter prop, you may as well just run a 2207 or 2306 motor. So I will say, I don't expect this, this prop to be the perfect match for my motor, but I am really curious to see just how it handles and what people like about it. Yeah, the lower pitch I can definitely feel. Woo! Oh! She's a... Are they faster? Am I going faster? Has my up tilt changed? I don't think so, but it feels like I'm going faster. Ah, yeah. I pulled back right into that. Last in the roundup, we've got the Mr. Steel FX S3 props. Now these props are manufactured by HQ and so we can expect that they'll have some characteristics similar to the V1S. Hmm. The S3 props have come out around the same time that HQ is making the 5.1 series. And so I, they don't actually put the diameter or the pitch on here. They just say S3. It's just Mr. Steel. And so in the past, I've flown these and thought they felt kind of similar to a 5x4.3, although other people have flown them and said, wow, they're so different. We'll see how they fly. Again, I kind of expect these to be underpropped on my motors and be a better fit for a, maybe a 2207 or they just don't need the great big motor that I'm, that I'm putting on this quad, but let's see how they fly. One thing you can definitely say about these props is that they draw way fewer amps than the other props. Maybe the T-motors are similar. Uh, on sharp punches, I'm peaking around 75 amps here. Check this one here. That's not full throttle, but it's, you know, 75 amps, not freaking bad. Um, and yeah, there's another one, 75, 80 amps. The Gemfan 5149s will be pulling closer to 100, 105 amps in those same situations. They definitely do make less thrust, but it's still perfectly usable. And that's entirely consistent with Steele's sort of M.O. as a pilot to make smooth props, but he's not Mr. You know, just jam throttle, rip, well, he, he rips balls, but he doesn't rip balls by raising the throttle and, and tearing around. He just swoopy flowy smooth stuff.
Okay, that brings us to the end of the video. And I have to say, I have... I, I mean, I'm going to fly them a few more. I just did one pack, but holy crap, the Gem Fan 5149 shocked me. People were so right that it is a really good prop. And if you've flown the Gem Fan 5142 and 5143 and thought, mm, this isn't really for me, go back and give the 5149. I don't know why it flies like this in terms of its numerical pitch and diameter. It shouldn't, but it just, it, the numbers don't tell the whole tale. I definitely suggest that you give that 5149 a try. The real question that's outstanding after this video is, how does the 5149 fly on like smaller motors without the, they might not be the best match for like a 2207 or a 2306. And it certainly might not be the best match for a high KV version of those motors, but on my motors, at least, I love it. And I have heard from other people running more normal motors that they love it too. So definitely give it a try. Uh, that's going to do it for this video. Links to all these products are down in the video description. And in case you missed it, there is like an hour long build video, the whole build of this very quadcopter. If you're interested, go check that out. That is also in the video description or in just one second. It's going to be up here in the, in the end card. Happy flying, everybody. Bye.